Hey guys, what's going on? Imaginary World here. Today I just wanted to bring you guys a video showing you how to set up your 808s in Ableton to make sure that they're gonna sound the best that they can possibly sound. There's a few tips that I learned throughout my years of producing in Ableton, and I think it can really help you guys bring your 808s to the next level. So let's go ahead and jump in. Just to show you the end result, this is a 808 I have in a beat pulled up here, and this is what it sounds like. So for 808s, I always use Simpler. I think it's just easy to use and it gets me where I wanna go much quicker than Sampler. Something you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do though, if you're using Simpler for the first time, is you're gonna to wanna to right click and convert it to Sampler. And the reason we're doing this is because there's this interpolation right here. By default, this is either set to no or normal. I don't remember which one it is, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to set that to best. What this is gonna do is it's gonna make it so that when you're playing your samples and you're either going up in pitch or down in pitch, it's gonna make sure that it's remaining at the highest quality it can possibly be. By default, it's actually gonna lower the quality when you're changing the pitch of your sample. Uh, and that goes for sampler and simpler. So then what you can do is you can right click, turn it back into simpler and save it as the default preset. Um, I don't wanna take full credit for this. This is something that I learned from decap um, but i just wanted to spread the knowledge on that so now that we got that out of the way let's go ahead and find an 808 to drop in here all right so i got the spins 808 loaded up here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to set this to one shot mode now this isn't really something you have to do but i do this most of the time simply because i want to just make it so that when i play it I don't have to hold the key, it'll just play the full sample. If you wanna make it so you hold the key so you can actually cut off your 808 at certain points, you can do this classic mode and that'll take care of that. For me though, most of the time I'm using one shots. Now there are a few other things you can do in here. So the volume, if you want it to be the full normal volume of the sample, you can set this to zero. I don't always recommend doing that though because if you wanna use velocity, you're gonna have to adjust this knob. And then like, let's say you set that to 100%, and you set this to zero. If you play a note at full velocity, it's gonna be super loud. So sometimes it's better to keep it at negative 12 and dial in this velocity. And I'll show you that in a bit. Really one of the most important things that I think a lot of people miss on their 808s is just simply tuning them. And this is actually really easy to do. Ableton has a tuner built in, so you can just pull that up. And all you gotta do is just play a C note on your keyboard. So as you can see, this sample is slightly out of tune. Now that's not gonna be a huge problem, but let me show you how to fix that. So see how this says pretty much plus 12? Well, we're talking about plus 12 cents here. So what I can do is I can come to this detune knob. So if you hit controls, it's right here, and you can type in negative 12. And now when I play that C sample, it's gonna be spot on. All right, as another example, I got this sample pulled up here and it's actually showing that it's a C, but when I play a C note on my keyboard, we can tell it's a C sharp. And this is why it's really important to tune your samples because mistakes are made sometimes when samples are being made and sometimes it's just not gonna show the right note. This is really easy to fix though. This time, all I gotta do is come down to semitones and drag that down one. So we're basically switching it from C sharp to C when I play it. While we're in this section, let me go ahead and show you glide really quick. So if I have this MIDI pulled up here and I have these notes, as you can hear, it's not gliding up to this note like you would think it would. So in order to enable that, if we come in here, set this glide function to glide, then we can adjust how long it's gonna take for this note to glide up to here with this time. So if I drag that up, it's gonna take 274 milliseconds or whatever you set it to. So this is what that will sound like. There are other ways to do glides as well. Like if I set this back to off, what I can do is I can come in here. As long as I don't have scale or fold selected, I can come over to note expression and I can actually use this to draw in my pitch glides, which I much prefer this. Uh, one thing I will say is if you don't have the grid turned on, it won't lock to it. So if you want to make it easier, you can turn the grid on. Um, but the reason why I much prefer this is because it's really easy to adjust exactly where you want your glide to go. And it gives you a lot more control. Not to mention, 
If you hold Alt, you can adjust the curve. So every glide can be different. If you want it to be a shorter glide, you can hold Alt and drag up. Or if you want it to be a longer, you can hold Alt and drag down. And you can really personalize and adjust these glides. Going back to the discussion of velocity that I had mentioned earlier, this is where that will come in handy. So I was making this beat and I wanted to do like a little bit of a roll where it goes up in volume and it was super easy to do this by just adjusting the velocity. So let me show you what that sounds like. And all I had to do was just adjust this velocity knob. So as you can see, I kept this at negative 12 and if I pull this back down to 0%, It doesn't do the roll. But when I put this up to 50%, I was able to get that roll. And the reason why I kept this back at negative 12 is because when I raise that up, because these notes are at a higher velocity, they're also gonna have more volume to them. So as you can hear when I play this, it's gonna have a much different sound to it. Now that clipping, that distortion is coming from Saturator and Camel Crusher, which is a whole nother topic. But basically, if you want that clipped sound, add some distortion at the end. Uh, Saturator is great built-in one. All you gotta do is just throw it on and turn the drive up and you can get some really awesome sounds. Obviously, Camel Crusher, I've talked about this before. Great, I love the British Clean preset and it is completely free. They don't make it anymore, so sometimes it's kind of hard to find online. Um, I'm sure you could find it somewhere though and it's a great distortion plugin. Let me show you what that sounds like in context for this beat. So yeah, that's how you can set up your 808s in Ableton so that they'll sound the best that they can possibly sound. You're getting the highest quality with that interpolation setting and you're able to mix it up with a few creative things spread throughout this video. If you guys like this video, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Other than that, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day.